in Australia. We also need a formal. This is a bit embarrassing, isn't it? Basically, it's a normal fridge, but it could be a healthier fridge, I know. I don't start looking at skim. Um, I need help. I think in this department, I need help. Well, obviously, not very much. There's not a lot in there at all. Um, an old ham roll, you know, uh, big ham, uh, fried rice. I don't, I don't know where that came from, and I don't know why it's even there still. And uh, in the freezer, we've got a... There's nothing. <laughs> There's nothing, basically. <laughs> I wish you guys told me you were doing this. Well, it's pretty stock standard, I think. Um, we've got some leftover pasta and some jam and Vegemite mayonnaise. Uh, we've got the margarine, which is low in fat. Uh, lots of fresh fruit. We've got some leftover sausages from last night's tea. Uh, some cheese, some juice boxes for the kids. Uh, some cold meat, lots of vegetables. Um, eggs. Um, so it's, it's pretty basic, and what? Most people, I suppose, would have. Please welcome Kathy Hopper, Haskell Daniel, and Leanne Wilson. Welcome. Welcome. Now, Kathy, what prompted you, in the end, to go on a diet and exercise? I think perhaps it had a lot to do with people congratulating me constantly and often on being pregnant and it got to the point where I was no longer offended um, by that. I also was very sick of hiding behind very big, daggy, baggy clothing. That was always a concern. I'd love just to get into a pair of Levi 501s with a nice belt and tuck a shirt and in. Tuck the shirt in. Uh -huh. I'd love to do that. All right, and hopefully I'm on the way. All right, Haskell. What prompted you? I just wanted to do something totally different and stop eating for a change and see. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, no, I just wanted to do basically something. I wanted to, um, to feel okay to walk at a normal pace with other people and not really pant and just feel healthy. Were you fat at school? Yes, I was. <laughs> I was. Um, I had a, a, an equation, probably weight equals age. No, the same. It, like my weight equals my age. Like 15 stone and 15 years old. Yeah. Leanne? Well, I spent my 20s um, having children and just taking off weight, putting it on in pregnancy. And I just decided when I got to 30, I just had to do something. And, um, you know, I had two choices to follow and it was just getting bigger and fatter and losing all my self-confidence and self-esteem and feeling really ashamed of myself. Or I'm um, taking the other road and taking some control and cutting out fat and sugar. And, and I, am gain I have even in the last six weeks gained heaps of self-confidence and I'm heaps happier. And I can chase the kids a bit faster. But a young mother it must be hard when you're, you're spending your life preparing food for kids and for the husband. I mean. Oh, definitely. And it, it, I've found over the last six weeks, I've actually have never been aware of how much extra I eat through picking because, you know, the leftovers now, I quickly throw them in the bin. Whereas, where did they go before? I never threw food out. That's right. The old and, the scraps uh, of cheese off the grater and yeah, all that sort of stuff. Exactly. There. Crusts. Yeah. Any leftovers would, I'd eat. All right, Kathy, what, what did you do? I chose um, to work under the guidance of a trainer at a gymnasium. And also I felt I needed an enormous amount of help with what I was doing wrong with my diet. I considered that I ate a healthy diet, but I obviously was doing something wrong. I mean, my bra was starting to fit better on the back than the front. Um, <laughs> that's where I carry weight. Everyone carries their weight in different spots. I have trouble with my back and with my tummy. Um, so I chose a, a nutritionist, a dietitian, and uh, she taught me lots and a trainer and exercise. Lots of exercise, and um, I've enjoyed well, it. I'm going to embarrass you very, embarrass you very early on in the piece. Here we go. Yeah. Your, when you first checked your body out for this diet, mm. your body fat content was almost one third of your weight, wasn't it? Thank you, Darren. Yes, it was. Thirty percent. Thirty. Thirty percent. <laughs> I was actually on a percentage scale when I had a fitness assessment when I joined the gymnasium. Much to my shock, horror. I had 30.9% body fat. So although I wasn't a huge person, I was carrying an enormous amount of excess fat, which is terribly unhealthy. And I felt unhealthy. I wasn't fit. And during the course of six weeks, I've actually gone down to 24% body fat. And right. I've got more to go. All right. Now, Haskell, what did you choose? 
I, I decided to try something like Jenny Craig because I haven't done Jenny Craig. I've done nearly every other diet. As <laughs> um, mentioned before, I have tried the Israeli diet. Um, the only thing was I got mixed up with the, the two days of chicken and the two days of vegetables, and I had four days of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> it just went to waste, the whole thing. But I, I, Jenny Craig I haven't tried before, so I, I gave that a bit of a shot. And so for six weeks you ate just packaged, pre-packaged food that they had sold to you? Yeah, plus extras. There, there are extras in the diet. Um, as in vegetables, crackers, you know, fruits. Did you cheat? Not really, no. I'll I ask you later in the program, did you cheat? <laughs> ask me again in the program. Yeah. No, I... Later in the program. I, I did by recompensating something, but then I found out later that that was okay. That oh. wasn't, like, a bad step. All right, so you to Jenny Craig. Leanne? Well, I joined a local town club, which is Take Off Weight Naturally. Um, it's very reasonable and well within our price range because, you know, being a one-income family, they base their diet on the National Heart Foundation um, and I also walked every morning at quarter past six and basically just cut the fat and the sugar from my diet and um, well yeah I feel heaps better for it. Now the town system and it's called other things in other states, yep. um, that's sort of like group therapy, people no. get you together yes. once a week and for a couple of bucks they say exactly. you can do it, you can do it sort mm. of stuff. And it's wonderful sitting in a group with people all in the same boat as you that you know they're not going to condemn you if you put on weight but be very supportive and you realise that, you know, hey, it's a, it's a really big problem and the ones that are, are doing really well can help the ones that aren't and, uh, yeah, it's great. All right, well, you three human guinea pigs, you stay there for the rest of the show <laughs> and we'll be back with more of The Diet Dilemma after. Cooking is fabulous, very high in calcium and it can be really low in fat but we have to look really carefully at the labels and see exactly what's in it. So your standard yoghurt doesn't say diet or light or anything. It's pretty much just a full cream yoghurt with fruit and sugar added to it. Then you've got your light yoghurt, something like that. Light generally means low fat with the yoghurt. So instead of 4%, it'll be about 1% or under. But it, um, having fruit added to it generally has quite a lot of sugar added to it as well. So what's the difference between a light yoghurt and a diet, diet yoghurt? Diet means that it has a sweetener added to it and doesn't um, have sugar added to it. It's still light, doesn't matter they spell it differently, it's still light, um, which means it's still very low in fat, but instead of sugar, it's got sweetener. Welcome back. My next guest believes we are becoming a nation of unfit fatsos and we're bringing up our children the same way. He's an expert, he's a former world champion marathon runner and a former head of the Australian Institute of Sport. Please welcome Robert DiCostello. <laughs> Thank you, Darren. Welcome, champ. Are you really saying that we've gone from the lucky country to the flabby country? Yeah, it's a, I think it's a, a real dilemma. Um, you know, since I've I left the institute. I've been uh, spending a fair amount of time uh, looking into the state of, uh, of our, our people's health and the, the state of the nation. And uh, it's become obvious to, to me that um, you look back, I mean, Australia was in its best shape in terms of, uh, of fitness and, uh, and body fat and obesity back in 19... 1933, 1935. Well, there was a depression going on. That, that was the depression. Yeah. That's right. And ever since then, uh, we've been putting on more and more fat and weight and getting more and more unfit and getting more and more out of shape. In your travels, what do you find that makes people most suddenly say, OK, I'll lose some weight or I'll take up some sport? Well, um, we've, we've just done a, a fairly large survey of about 600 people here in, in Melbourne. And, uh, and what we've found is that the, the biggest thing that causes change for people is pain. And it's not until people are actually put into a situation where they're either experiencing physical pain, such as they've just had a heart attack, or emotional pain, they look at themselves in the mirror and say, look, I just don't like the way I look, I want to make some changes, that they actually take action and take self-responsibility and, and put in, self in, in, in place a, a plan to make that change happen. Starting weights and finishing weights for, for our guinea pigs, what did, what did you lose, Cathy? <laughs> The program I undertook is very, the weight is very irrelevant. I've been taught that it's what makes up your body weight that's important because I've developed a lot of muscle from the work I've done, so therefore my weight wasn't the, a dramatic decrease. I actually only lost 4.5 kilograms on the system. But as you said, your body fat went down. My body fat went down, I lost 49.8. And you'd agree with that, Robert? Yeah, I think that's, that's spot on. It's a very important myth that needs to be dispelled. The issue is not weight. You know, we've got to move away from being weight watchers and focusing purely on the, on the bathroom scales. 
what we have to do is focus on fat and body fat, and that's the issue. Haskell, what did you lose? I lost um, about 12 centimetres around um, my waist and clothes are looser. As far as weight is, um, this is totally amazing. Jenny Craig did not have a weighing scale that would weigh me. It, it, <laughs> it, uh, it was big enough? It, yeah, I was bigger than it. And it went right around and, and it got to a point where it couldn't, where, where I thought that, that was the weight. Like 135 kilos plus six, but that was where it stopped. So I exceeded that. <laughs> And um, for six weeks, we kept getting on it, and it wouldn't budge. And they kept saying, yeah, head office is going to get a new weighing scales that fit you, head out. The man office. who broke the scales and is Jenny Craig, all right? Yeah. Leanne, what did you lose? Well, I've lost nine and a half kilos in the six weeks. Um, I've still got 17 and a half kilos to go. So I've still, I'm about a third of the way there. That's fantastic, isn't it? Well, I lost four kilos in the first week, which I expected because you'd lose a lot of fluid. But in the last five weeks, it's been five and a half kilos, which is about a kilo a week, which is about average. Now, I expect Robert, it to slow down right. as I get Am I right there. in saying that crash diets, anybody can lose 10 pounds in a week, yeah. say four or five kilos, yeah. you lose water, you mm. lose fat, yeah. you lose yeah. muscle, yeah. and you put back water and fat? Yeah, I mean, there's a proliferation of diets out in the marketplace. I mean, just about every month in a women's magazine, you see a, a new diet program come through. And a lot of them work if you focus on weight, because, because you will lose weight. But unfortunately, what you lose initially is a lot of fluid. You, you lose a little bit of fat, but what you also lose is muscle. And you, and you go through, and as you lose more and more muscle, your body finds it much more difficult to burn up fat. So you go onto your diet, because when you go on a diet, you go off a diet, rather than making sustainable changes to, to your lifestyle and your habits. Mm -hmm. So you go on a diet, you go off a diet. When you come off your diet, you've lost weight, but you aren't able to metabolise and burn up fat like you used to. So you invariably you put on more weight. And the body says, you're not going to starve me again. You tricked me the last time. That's right. We're, we're very smart organisms. We, our body preserves the, f the fuel and the energy that we've got by slowing down how we, how we, uh, we yeah. burn it up. Okay, thanks for that. After this break... I think the Dermadol's a good example. If you have a look at 40% fat there, well, if really um, it doesn't it. actually have it on there, I don't think. But then if you go down to... And there is basically a difference. But there's, there's three categories, really. There's regular cheese, there is reduced fat, so it says reduced fat, and they're normally around 25 to 30% fat. So still reasonably high in fat, um, but not a bad one. And then you've got your really low fat. And to be called low fat, legally, it has to be less than 25% fat. My next guest was so heavy, her doctor warned her she would be dead by the time she was 30 if she did not lose weight. After all, she did weigh 149 kilograms. She's lost uh, half of that. Yeah, it's pretty big, huh? <laughs> 149 kilograms. Uh, she's lost half of it. And last year, she won the title Slimmer of the Year. Would you please welcome Sabina Googler? Hello. You're welcome. <laughs> Sabina, 149K... At what age were you? 18. 18. That must have been horrible for a teenage girl to, to be that weight, to be teased and all those sorts of things. It was. It was very hard because inside I'm just like any regular person. I have the same feelings, the same desires, the same dreams. But from, you know, the world just judges you from what you look like. So I, it was very painful, yes. A lot of discrimination. And oh, I can even remember family get-togethers. It's like every time the family got together, there was a five minutes of mourning for the life I was never going to have. <laughs> no, no marriage, no husband, no job, no nothing, no, no possible. Well, at various times, obviously, you tried to lose weight. What, what sort of things did you do? I tried everything, um, weight loss centres, diets. Um, I was overweight from a small child onwards, so I was in hospitals, various tests. They put me on, on drugs to help me lose weight, and I'd be a nervous mess at the age of 12 because I couldn't handle those. At 18, I had surgery, I bypass surgery on my small intestine time where I lost a lot of weight and gained it all back again. So I tried everything. I'm a guinea pig when it comes to trying to lose weight. All right, what do you weigh now? 70 kilos. 70 kilos, That's fan that is fantastic. <laughs> huh? uh, the obvious question, how did you do it? I found that the biggest problem, we have a 98% failure rate when it comes to weight loss and maintenance, and I find the biggest problem is that we haven't realised we're trying to fix a problem that's inside of us from the outside by focusing only on food and exercise. If we focus on food and exercise, it's like mopping up the floor, but we've got to find the tap and switch that off, and the tap's inside right, of right, us. Right, so that's, this is the tap up in here, in the Yes, head. yes. It's your relationship to yourself, extremely low self-esteem, and also your relationship to food. In our culture, we're taught to food, for, use food in inappropriate ways. 
to stuff feelings, to help us feel better. Well, speaking of food, you have on on you the uh, one of the dresses you used to... I mean, I don't mean wearing one of the dresses <laughs> you used to have. Uh, you have with you one of the dresses you used to wear. Do you want to stand up and show us that? Will you put it on for us? Yes. Not a... It's one hell of a netball team. Indeed. <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> All right. So that's what you used to wear. Yeah. Put it to the side. Do you, do you realise that there's room for another person in there? Yep. In fact, there will be another person in there. Yep. Hold on, let me... Come and help me with Let me have a look here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> first time I've worn a dress on national television. Okay. Are you there? Yeah. I'm not very good at this, as you can see. Yeah. We'll manage. Can we manage this? Yeah. Hey. Yep. So I lost about I lost about as much as you are, as much as you weigh. You lost me. Well, I lost 79 kilos. How much do you weigh? Uh, 84. Well, yeah. You must feel fantastic. I do. I feel great. Life's wonderful. But not just because I've lost the weight, because I've realised that I'm a valuable person for who I am yeah. and not what I look like. So now there's nothing that will hold me back. I don't even feel silly standing here like this. <laughs> 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 On a serious note, though, Professor, Professor Volkerst, a lot of what Obviously, uh, what was being carried by Sabina was fat. Do you tell us professionally, as a, as a nutritionist and a dietitian, what that sort of fat does to you? What does it do to your heart? Well, it's a lot of load for the heart, of course. So, so the heart can fail under those, those circumstances. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Keep going. It, it, also, <laughs> it, it, it also increases the risk of the arteries supplying the heart blocking off. Um, it, it, it increases the risk of diabetes, it increases the risk of, of gallstones. Uh, people who uh, are that, that weight are more prone to accidents. Uh, um, and, and more than that, of course, the things that we've heard about, the self-esteem, uh, the participation in life, the isolation. All right, now, Marita Grundy from the, the Heart Foundation. I mean, you are totally involved in all of this. Um, you have a fascinating thing called a Called, please stand up. Have you got a, a thing called a, um, called a, a sort of a, a, a health pyramid? Could you explain that to us? Mm. The uh, healthy diet pyramid is designed to give uh, a, a representation of the types of food that make up a balanced diet. And if we start at the bottom of it and have a look at the sorts of foods that are represented there, those foods include things like your cereals, your breads, uh, rice, pastas, other grains. We, they also include um, vegetables, fruits, that, that sort That's of thing. That's the broadest base then for your diet? That's right. But up the top there'd be oils and... Oils. Alcohol. And margarine, uh, yes, alcohol uh, and um, sugary foods, confectionery, that Nuts sort of thing. Nuts and things like that? Nuts uh, are a little different. Uh, nuts are high in fat but they're a good type of fat. There, there is also some protein in nuts and nuts can be part of healthy eating if you don't have too many of them. Yeah. Okay. Now, Kathy Hopper, in your food pyramid before you did this diet, uh, in the top of it... Chocolate. Look, chocolate. <laughs> so no more chocolate. I'm a chocoholic. I love it. And I haven't had any for six weeks and I really haven't missed it. Haskell, you're... Probably anything that moved, Darren. <laughs> 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 OK, Le Leanne, yeah. what's your weakness? I'm the same. I love chocolate and I, f I used to use it as a reward, yeah. you know, for, for when I was, um, you know... Things like soft it. drinks and all that sort of stuff? Soft drink. Coke. Takeaway food is really bad. Mm. McDonald's and Kentucky Fried Chicken, we were always eating far too much of that. And for the children as well, it's bad. So it's good to cut it out for a while. Well, I, saw an, interesting a long time. I saw, saw an interesting statistic when we were preparing this program. That in America, they drink 1,500 million litres of soft drink a week mm. for breakfast. <laughs> On that note, we'll That's go to a break. And coming guy. up, a, a man who drove 200 kilometres for a fast food fix. My health tip is, before a game, pancakes, orange juice and a lot of fruit. It's really good carbohydrate. And in your performance, it's not heavy in your stomach. What's probably important to look at here is markings like the Heart Foundation is a really good way of showing that the Heart Foundation tick is a good way of showing that it's low in fat. It has to be less than 10% fat. No skin. Mince. Mince is um, a good versatile meat, but you can see by looking at something like this, there's quite a lot of fat marbled through that. So you really want to get the, the low fat mince minces or meats um, and again less than about 10 percent fat which they should mark on there if it's a diet mince or a, or a very low fat one. Meat is a really good source of iron and zinc so I really want you to include it in your diet but have a look at the fat that's on it or around it. 
Welcome back to The Diet Dilemma. Australians, we are told, are addicted to fast food. So we sent Stephen Jacobs to try to help some people kick their bad habits. <laughs> uh, if I was to um, swap you these pieces of fruit, would you give me your fast food meal? No. No way? Not in a million no, years? No way. Why not? Because <laughs> uh, I love it. <laughs> Have you ever been on a diet? Uh, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been on a diet before? Yes. <laughs> what sort of diet? Check on fat people today, isn't it? <laughs> would you give me that hamburger if I was to give you an apple? You yeah. would. Here you go. There you are. <laughs> it's like taking candy from a baby. <laughs> well, how about I swap you the apple for your uh, ham and cheese triangle there? Yeah, this one's cold. But yeah, I'll swap you. <laughs> uh, there you go. Oh, look at that. That's hideous. Excuse me, would you like this? If you think that you're healthy, you'll stay young, is that I it? I don't have to be 100, mate. I'll be, I'd like to see you out here. <laughs> so I'll do the deal? Do it. There you go. That's yours. You've finished anyway, haven't you? <laughs> that was a bad deal on my behalf. Fries look pretty good, though. <laughs> Oh dear. My next guest is best known as Australia's gold medal winning hero at the Los Angeles Olympics. He also once drove 200 kilometres to buy Kentucky Fried Chicken. Would you please welcome Dean Lucan. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. A Kentucky Fried Chicken freak. Well, it used to be that way. How many pieces did you eat? Only a bucket. In one hit? Yes, uh, well, plus the rest of it that comes with it. Bit of bread, bit of this, bit of that, but... Um, well... Why? Why? Because, uh, because it was there. 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 <laughs> no, I, I, I was a... Well, being involved in sport and weightlifting and everything, I was a volume person, so just so happens the closest Kentucky Fried was 200 k's away, so... You gotta go when you gotta go. Yeah. <laughs> so you've had an amazing weight loss. Yes. How'd you do it? Well, um, it takes a fair bit of dis discipline, but like basically I think I've done everything. I've done everything wrong, I've done everything right. And uh, I think there's a lot of people out there that know what, if, what to do right. You've got to know what to do right, but till you find that formula that works for yourself, you can't get on a winner, I don't think. And a lot of people, they get on these uh, fast food diets or uh, like... A quick diet weight loss ones. Quick weight loss ones, but they don't work. It's a fast fix. I did the same thing. I lost, once I lost eight kilos in eight days because I had to go and do some sort of thing, but I put that back on within two weeks. So I had to discover what worked for me. What did you lose? 50 kilos. <laughs> Over, or oh, five years, basically. I did lose it slowly, but... Um, so this idea about losing half a pound a week or 500 grams a week for a year, that's the way to go? You yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I think that's spot on. You, you, you know. need to do it that yeah. way, I believe. Yeah. Because it's a, it's a change in your, in your lifestyle, it's a change in your habits, mm. and it's an educational process. And just, you know, sort of going onto a diet and going off a diet is not going to do it. That's you right. Fluid You've got to make it a way of life. Yeah. If you don't make the diet that you're on a way of life, you can't get success. Yeah. Leanne, this is your, your new philosophy? Well, it is, and it's the first time that I have felt like that, because every other time it's been so impatient, get it off, and then I don't know what I thought I was going to do at the end of it anyway, just eat myself back up there again, and that's what I usually did do. Once you stop the diet, yeah, Yeah, but this time I've learnt patience, learning. I have not been on a diet. In fact, my nutritionist or dietitian has actually said I've under-eaten. Um, I just couldn't fit it all in, basically. I have not been living for the last six weeks in diet mentality, and that... Uh, psychologically for me has been why I've been a success. Gloria Murphy, you've tried everything, haven't you? Well, really I have. Um, I've had my jaw wired together. I've had stomach stapling done three times. Um, I've dieted. I had the same problem with the scales. Um, in fact, it was so bad they took me down to the hospital kitchen and weighed me on meat scales with the sides of beef. And Are you dieting now? No, I'm not. I've given it up as a bad joke. I, I'm now a fatigo fatigram before. You do fatigrams, yeah. Yeah. But really, having tried all those other things, is there inside Gloria Murphy a thin woman trying to get out? I don't think so. Not anymore. She got lost somewhere in the fat. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, now, Katie, Katie Durante, you've you've involved in uh, in larger sized clothes, underwear, or lingerie for. Can you stand up with me. Um, Somebody's just 
so heavy, something so heavy, they just broke the chair. Um, yes. <laughs> you, you're involved yes. in, in selling larger lingerie for women. Uh, yes, I do. I have a shop called My Secret in Armadale, and it specializes in Melbourne. In, in Melbourne, specializes in very pretty, lacy, sexy lingerie for larger sizes. It what, starts what? at size 16. Size 16, that's the bottom uh, line. And it goes up from there up to size 32. Uh, because I feel that every woman has the right to be beautiful and sexy and look attractive and feel good about herself. And I think it comes down to feeling how you feel about yourself. Now, it, it, we all say that, how you feel about yourself. But how many people here, being honest, who are a bit overweight, would rather be a bit lighter? No matter how you feel about yourself, you'd rather be a bit lighter, correct? Darren. Where? That's... That's because we, are fo we live in a very dysfunctional world where from the day we're born we're, taught, we're, we're judged on our performance and not on just who we are. So people tend to think that they're lovable for what they do or, 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 what, or what, they, what, they, what they do with their lives or how they look rather than realising that they're lovable just for who they are. They're okay. beautiful people. Uh, Cathy Godbold, welcome. Thank you, Darren. Um, you are now of a, of a weight that you're very happy with. Um, I'm fairly happy with. I'm never ever completely happy. I've put on two stone. <laughs> put on two stone? I've actually put on two stone. Um, I decided not to worry about eating anymore and I actually ate too much. I went to the, the other end of the uh, scale. Well, let me put it this way, that um, at the time when you were, what was the lowest you ever weighed? Oh. <laughs> I mean, recent years, not when you were a seven pound years. baby. Um, six stone. You're down to six stone. Now, some people would have said, I put it delicately, that see pictures of, of Kathy, she must be anorexic which you said you weren't, but you must have had some form of eating disorder to get down to that. Absolutely. Um, I would go um, a couple of weeks without eating. I'd, I'd just have Diet Coke, um, exercise madly, um, but completely deny that I had a problem. Mm. So you understand then when people look at these skinny models in New York, uh, they don't know the fact that some of them survive on Diet Coke, popcorn and cocaine. It's, it's sad. I don't understand anymore why we need to see thin models. Why don't we have magazines that are full of fat models or larger size? They don't do anything for me. All right, to the audience, do you, if the magazines were full of more realistic women, large women, would you still buy the magazines? As much, or do you like the escapism of looking at these beautiful, young, glamorous models? Yeah, I would. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Dean. Thank you, Dean. <laughs> on, on that note, we'll be back with more of The Diet Dilemma. If you find that you're living a fairly hectic lifestyle like myself and maybe drinking a few too many of these, then my health tip to you would be to try and include lots of fresh fruit and vegetables and salad in your diet and try and get lots of sleep too. They are very high in fat, but really nutritious. Lots of folate and other vitamins in there. What you do with avocado is get them nice and ripe. Use a thin spread instead of butter or margarine. So get a nice crusty roll, oh, yeah. a really thin spread, lots of other things. And you still get the taste, but you don't get right. too much fat there. Of course, green leafy veggies, very really important. Really high in iron. Yeah, Popeye was pretty right. Lots of iron, <laughs> good for strength and all that type of thing. Now, you mentioned potatoes. I love potatoes. Potatoes are fabulous. Potatoes don't have any fat. And there's a popular, well, misconce a misconception, isn't it? popular misconception that they're fattening, but in fact they're not, they're very low in fat. It's and what you perhaps put on them, the sour right. cream. And Unless you cut them in half and fill them with sour cream. But if you do something like put um, cream corn or baked beans or low-fat cheese in the middle of them, they're great. Now, diets can be cheap, but some obviously are expensive. Uh, Kathy, Haskell and Leanne tried different weight loss programs, so from the top of the range to the bottom. So have a look at the screen, let's check the cash register. Now, Kathy. Uh, in your your costs, total six hundred and eighty-five dollars, and worth every cent. Because I, as I said, I'm not on a diet. My entire lifestyle has changed. My approach to eating, my approach to exercise is altered. I am now fit and I am healthy. But on top of all that, you've got to buy your food as well for the family and for you. Yes, but that's and an, can, an expense. Can you afford to keep doing that? Well, no. But I feel now I don't need weekly consultations with a dietitian. Uh, I would like to continue with her because I learnt so much, but I'd probably do it maybe once a month, maybe twice a month. And with the trainer, if you go to a gym that um, does a fitness assessment, they will help you through and guide you through a program. All right, so money, do you think money well spent? Oh, yes, definitely. Okay, Haskell? Yeah. Your my, costs? My one. There you are, $529.40 it costs for you. For the total six weeks, yeah. But that's, that's the majority of that is all, all the food. Um, mm. Probably $30 a week roughly spent on uh, milks, uh, 
extra sort of like grains as in bread, you know, uh, saladas, mm. uh, fruits, vegetables. Were, were you happy with it? Um, no, it's not for me. Okay, you, you, as of tonight, will you stop? Yes. <laughs> Yes. No, no, I will stop Jenny Craig, uh, that particular will diet. Will you stop? Will you? But I, mean, I, will, I will follow, as everyone else says. If I follow you home tonight, yeah. I won't see a detour past Pizza Hut, McDonald's and Kentucky Fried. Maybe. No. <laughs> no. All right, Leanne, your costs. Let's have a look at your costs. You spent a total of $29. And that includes a $15 and worth every joining cent. fee. to um, incorporate all the food. I knew enough about, you know, you see enough now on fat and fibre. I knew that it was fat grams that I had to count. Um, walking is free. You can get out. I walk at quarter past six in the morning with a girlfriend. It's half an hour. We get away from the children before the, the day starts. Um, I, I go to the town club. It costs me $2 a week. I get group support. I get encouragement. And, um, yeah, I'll keep going. I'll probably go for my lifetime. Uh, up the back here. I'd just like to ask the ladies who are the mums that that were the guinea pigs, have they changed their families' <laughs> yeah, diet as absolutely. well? Absolutely. Yeah. Because that's the important thing, isn't it? To educate. Well, it is. It's to educate. I've got a five year old daughter, Being and it's skinny. important to me that she doesn't go through 15 years of, you know, up and down yo yo dieting well, I was like a, I have. I was a mm. fat kid, and I, I put that down to my mother. <laughs> well, basically, because, like, being from a European background, we ate fatty foods, and we ate more and more of it. So you, I mean, you, you tell you were a fat kid. I mean, how fat are we, what was, fat are we talking here? I was 17 stone when I was 13. Holy shamoly. That, that is a big kid. You're so I, I can see, like, you've got to really get these whole things under perspective because to me, to, to eat volume's easy. Even today I know what it's like to eat because I can remember what it's like to eat. And I could probably force myself to, but I don't want to. All right, up the back. Um, eating's a, a very social thing in our society. I mean... Thousands and thousands of years ago, cavemen would slaughter a mastodon, they'd all sit down together and eat. And I find that in society today, we meet for lunch, we go to a lot of parties, we have dinner parties. Um, the, the panel, where, where do they eat out when they're busy? Where do they snack? Where do they go for lunch? If, if you're not on a diet and you're taught and you know what to eat, I ate out last night because there's nothing worse than sitting in a restaurant saying, can't eat that, I'm on a diet. And you become this boring, boring person and in the end no one invites you out because you don't eat and participate. You just have to be taught and learn what you can eat. So if you eat Italian, don't go for the very thick, oily uh, sauces with, and cream sauces. Tomato go for the tomato-based ones with a bit of basil and stuff. You're still social, you still enjoy it, it still tastes great and you don't have to do the dishes. And you are then becoming just, you're not on a diet. You've got, everyone's got to get out of this diet mentality. Just eat well and eat healthy and be fit. I was wondering if any of the people who had been on diets had ever tried, tried dietary suppressants like Tenuate or Duramine. Yeah. Yes, I tried Yeah, them. I've Do had injections. They I've had me been on a course of diuretics and um, slimming tablets. And Did any yeah, of them work? They had me on slimming tablets when I was already 12, 13 years old and I was a nervous wreck mm. because of it and it was awful. Have you tried them? Yes, I have. With what effect? Um, I found that they made me race around a lot. Yeah. Yes. Um, I was always short-breathed because I was always racing around and I didn't lose any weight at all. Now, I'm five foot three and I weigh 70 kilos and I've, I've tried eating healthy, not eating at all, attenuate dosbin and I think of exercise and I think oh my god and I want to know is there any way that I can increase my physical fitness because I get short breath I think it's very Stop important it. I come well I was the kind of person who never exercised I was this big PE was torture for me and now I exercise and I really enjoy it it's very important to find what you like and to make sure that it's enjoyable. When I go power walking, I have my Walkman, I have my music, I have my tapes. When I go do my gym work, I work out with a, gym, with a buddy who makes me laugh a lot, so we're chatting and with, so I make sure that I enjoy it. You know, it's not so much about getting out and exercising, it's about moving. We, as a, as a community, have stopped moving. We now have these little remote controls. We don't even have to get off the couch to change the TV station anymore. <laughs> and I've seen people, and I've done it myself, you drive around the shopping centre looking for a car park, which will, you know, drive around for five minutes, have you done this? So, so you don't have to walk for 30 seconds, you're closer to the shops. I mean, the incredible lengths that we go to, 
so that we don't have to move, we don't have to actually be physical. But when you talk about remote controls, I think the figure was that 93% of all commercials running in children's television hours are for food yep. or for drink. Yep, it's, it's talk, terrible. Talking about sport, Darren, I, up until six weeks ago, I had never, ever been into a gymnasium. I was totally intimidated by them. I thought I'd be the fittest, the fattest, and I thought they were full of people that wore fluoro G-strings. And if you're select... Oh, it's true. Yeah, I have it this... That's why the blokes go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, She's talking about the blokes. So, Kathy, <laughs> what, I had what did you wear? What did you well, wear? Well, I had a perception of, of gyms being that, and they fa fitted that mould. I found a gym that suited what I wanted out of a gym, and it was bike shorts and baggy T-shirts. Exactly. And, and gyms aren't what... If you haven't been to one, they're not as scary as you think they are. They're not as intimidating. And when you go, there are a lot of people that are suffering just like me. Because I feel that I fit a demographic of, I'm not hugely overweight. I know I'm not obese. But I fit a demographic, I think, of the more average person whereby I'm just a stone or two overweight and that makes me unhappy. Yeah. All right, speaking of being unhappy, we'll have to take a break. We'll be back with uh, more in a moment. I believe eating well is more important than training. I, see yeah. I have this muesli every day. Okay, muesli can be good or it, or it sometimes isn't. The only, only problem potentially with the muesli is if it's toasted and it has fat. Now that's not a toasted one by the look of it. So um, can you read this label and tell me if I'm okay? <laughs> okay, two things to look for. Ingredients listed most to least. But I think probably of more value is actually looking at the table because it has a really good nutritional table on there. So start off with the per 30 gram serve. It's only got 0.4 grams of fat. 30 grams, so that's really low in fat. During that commercial break, we tried an experiment to see if tonight's message is uh, getting through. Our hostesses uh, offered our studio audience a snack, a choice between chocolates and fresh fruit. And you, I noticed, madam, went for the chocolates. chocolates. Didn't yeah. you? <laughs> Haven't you learned anything? Oh, I think a little bit of anything doesn't do you any harm. All right, see. If you learn to eat in moderation, you'll be fine. Now, actually, that's a very good point because most nutritionists will say any diet that totally bans a, a, a favour, a chocolate, an occasional slice of pizza or whatever, you won't stay on. Would you agree with that? That's for sure. I love chocolate and I like champagne, so a little bit of each of that doesn't do me any harm. I hope it's not French. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're almost out of time tonight, but let's just go back to our three volunteers, our human guinea pigs, uh, oh. Kathy <laughs> and yes, Haskell Darren. and Leanne. You, let's wrap this up very quickly. You are going to keep going the way you're going. Absolutely. I've been very happy. I have learned a new lifestyle for myself. I'm not dieting. I can eat what I want, when I want, but now I know how to do it. How long since you wore a skirt? A very long time. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Haskell? How long have I worn a skirt? Well. <laughs> <laughs> it's rather <It's> personal. <laughs> How long? It's about half an hour since I wore one. <laughs> No, no, I'm gonna I'm going to go on a on a diet eating plan, whatever you want to call it, by a dietitian with from the five food groups and concentrate on the exercise and gradually take it off in the time that it takes. Right, not goals. Well, I'm gonna keep going to town definitely. I mean it provides me the discipline that I need of, you know, answering to them. But I feel that I've made a lifetime commitment to myself. I've still got seventeen and a half kilos to go before I get to my goal. I'd like to see you all in a year and be there and I, I really think that you know this time yes for me it's going to work please take on our guests <laughs> and also thank you all thank all of you for coming as well thanks very much uh, so I guess until next time that's life good night